Well, hi, everybody. This is Dave Bartosowitz again. I cannot believe it, but it is another day in the LDS church. And I've got to explain a couple things um, because my one of my last videos was about Heavenly Mother, how the Mormon church is trying to position themselves into showing that they believe in a heavenly mother and they're trying to not only just say she's sacred but they're trying to give a lot more information about her and just in the most recent week i have got to tell you there's been four articles four articles written about her and i got to share it's it's the name of heavenly mother and father insights that might change how you read the scriptures it's right here you'll see that um, also 14 myths and truths we know about our heavenly mother wow they're truths and myths that they actually know with christianity um we never really get involved in discussing who Heavenly Mother is because we don't believe there is a Heavenly Mother in that sense. And the Christian understanding when you hear about Heavenly Mother, I mean, like I said before, you know, we, we talk about uh, Mary as the mother of God. If you're Catholic, Orthodox, or, or from high church beliefs, we, we believe that. But as far as, as saying the things I'm going to discuss with you right now that you're going to hear about Mormons declaring who Heavenly Mother is and how they, they view her, it's going to blow you away a little bit. So, it's going to be a little surprising. Also, I did another video last week, and it was about seven ways to grow closer to Heavenly Mother and include her in your worship. Now, I've got to tell you that I produced that video. That was done. I'm going to put it at the end of this uh, show. You will see that it was a, a actual article that talked about it, um, and the LDS Church, I guess they had some, you know, kind of difficult things that people were talking about, and they took it down, the article. Very fascinating. But they also have another article they put out, 11 Powerful Truths About Our Heavenly Mother from Prophets and Apostles. So here you have it again. You keep having four articles that came out this past week uh, discussing who Heavenly Mother is. Now, I want to give you some real understanding of what the articles talk about. I, I put together, I copied and pasted um, a number of things that they said. So I want to go right to it. For those who are Christians, you need to understand their beliefs in in actually this view of Heavenly Mother. So let's start off. A lot of this writing is coming from Daniel Wagner, too, and he's um, putting it out on LDS Living, and it's like kind of disturbing, I guess, but he wants people to know uh, his sincere beliefs about who Heavenly Mother is. It's from BYU, and he's written articles a number of times about um, about Heavenly Mother. But let's, let's go and talk about it right now. This is what he declares. The book of Abraham, which Joseph Smith began translating in 1835, had been a vital tool in clarifying the creation, plan of salvation, and how we understand deity and our relationship to it. He says that in Abraham 427, we read, so the gods went down to organize man in their own image, in the image of the gods, to form they, him, male and female, to form they, them. Now, he says that here we find gods 
creating the world, not a singular God or father. In addition, the clarification in their image, male and female, reveals that the feminine was included at this moment of creation, suggesting our Heavenly Mother as well as the Father and the Son help shape this world, our bodies, and our natures. So now what he's trying to refer to is he's trying to refer to the fact in, in his claiming of this truth that when when they spoke about the gods went down to organize man, Heavenly Mother was there because Heavenly Mother, in their view, is a god. He's, she's, in essence, part of the Godhead now. So you see a very different sort of perspective than the Christian viewpoint of the Godhead, right? Completely different. Is this going into heresy? Is this heretical? Oh, absolutely. I mean, just by examining some of these statements right now, you'll clearly see that, that Mormonism has a whole different twist, if you will, of the Christian view of God, claiming that now the Godhead is also mother, the, the heavenly mother, God. I, I don't know about you. I'm just declaring this and I'm reading it to you, but this is the truth. This is why we have to be careful. We have to be very careful when we see Mormons. We have to be careful because this is their thought. Now, she, he also says many church leaders have spoken about this fact, including Brigham Young, who stated in, in his 1876 semi-annual general conference address, he says, having fought the good fight, we then shall be prepared to lay our bodies down to rest, to await the morning of the resurrection, when they will come forth and be reunited with the spirits, the faithful, as it is said, receiving crowns, glory, immortality, and eternal lives. Then will they become gods, even the sons of God, then they will become eternal fathers, eternal mothers, eternal sons, and eternal daughters. Being eternal in their organization, they go from glory to glory, from power to power. They will never cease to increase and to multiply worlds without end. When they receive their crowns, their dominions, then they will be prepared to frame earth like unto ours and to be people and to people them in the same manner as we have been brought forth by our heavenly parents. This is Brigham Young, Journal's Discourses, 18259, October 8th, 1876. So what you're seeing right now is that this, this understanding is coming out more and more. He's trying to help people to say, Heavenly parents is the, the essence of who we are going to become. It's necessary to be married and to be exalted, to have an exalted um, wife with you. Afterwards, you're going to see that if you don't have a wife, there's no way you could be exalted, become a God, and, and also um, be in a position to, to create worlds that you'll be supplying with a number of your own children. Now, I know this is kind of weird. I'm sure this is your, if you're a Christian, you're going, holy cow, this is crazy stuff. How could they believe this, right? Um, the reality is that they're trying to come out more and more with this. I, again, I spoke last week about um, the whole concept, the whole view, if you will, of why are they doing this? Why are they coming out so much more now with this kind of understanding? I really believe that there is a feminist movement that's coming about more and more and that movement is is being interconnected more and more and trying to showcase the the feminine side of of this this faith and uh, you know i mean the men have the priesthood the women now in essence can become gods and they are part of the godhead so it, it shows something different as well as i think in rome what's going on with rome um you know there is a view in the, in the roman catholics of of when they see this, they're in Rome, and it's the largest Christian uh, church in the world, 1.2 billion. So they're, they're sensing if they could show some of this, maybe more Roman Catholics might be interested in wanting to get baptized or converting. I don't know. It's just some ideas that, that you have to consider mm -hmm. and think.
think about why they're pushing this. Now, <clears throat> as Elder Erratus Snow proclaimed, he was an apostle in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, testified, he says, if I believe anything that God has ever said about himself, I must believe that deity consists of the man and the woman. There can be no God, no God, except he is composed of the man and woman united, and there is not in all the eternities that exist or ever will be a God in any other way. Journal Discourses, 1972 um, through 73, March 3rd, 18. Uh, 78. They're really putting this journal of discourses now. Now, it's really fascinating because in the past, if we try to proclaim information from the journal of discourses, you would see a lot of uh, Mormons in the past say, hey, it's not canonized. We don't even want to follow that. But now you're seeing a lot of writings uh, with this viewpoint coming out. Um, President Dallin H. Oaks of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles has said, Our theology begins with heavenly parents. Our highest aspiration is to be like them. That's what they're declaring. Dallin H. Oaks, Apostasy and Restoration. So they, they really believe this is from the Ensign May 1985, 1995, page 84. This is something that they're really trying to convey more and more um, in saying that this is the truth. This is where we need to aspire to. So anybody who's single, who doesn't have, you know, a guy doesn't have a wife or a single woman who doesn't have a husband, you're out of luck. That's something that they're trying to tell. So they're trying to unite this concept of family, 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 husband and wife, because in essence, they believe, the Mormon faith, they believe, honestly, that, that, that it's all connected to a husband and wife. And that's why they look at Heavenly Father, the exalted uh, God, uh, and he's glorified with, with a body and bones, as well as uh, his wife who is glorified with a, a body and bones, you know, exalted as gods. So this is what they really believe. Now, the other article I want to talk to you about is 14 Myths and Truths We Know About Our Heavenly Mother. Latter-day Saints do have access to many revealed truths about Heavenly Mother, thanks in large part to the church's effort to make historical records, scripture, and documents more accessible than ever before. These truths can help us to understand our mother in heaven, feel nearer to her, and understand our own potential in an elevated, clearer way. Now, when they're declaring truths, this article is like declaring truths, right? They're saying these are truths. You got to ask yourself, oh, is it really truth? Is it, I mean, how do you come up with these truths is that if, if all of Christianity doesn't declare its truth, they just declare it's a myth or, or it's, a, it's a lie. I mean, I don't understand how you make truths when you can't even substantiate it, you know, with the whole Christian um, Christian mainframe of, of Christianity. It doesn't make any sense to me, but they, they claim it's truth. So um, one of the truths that they say is Heavenly Mother shaped who we are before this life, and she will continue to shape and mentor us through eternity. Now, this is uh, what they're writing here. Um, he's saying that as Sister Kathy Kip Clayton said in 2015, the worldwide devotional, we have Heavenly Father's spiritual DNA coursing through our veins. Because of the revealed doctrine of the family proclamation to the world, we know, again, we know, right, that we also have the divine DNA of our Heavenly Mother filling our veins and souls, allowing us to become like our divine parents. This is truth. This is their truth. They believe this. This is they say they know. And again, the rest of the Christian world looks at this and they go, huh? Huh? Of it. What? This is truth? 
And so, but their their belief, this is their belief of the, this apostasy that that fell right uh, after the the apostles died. That there's no church and everything was lost. And it wasn't until 1800 years later that Joseph Smith had these these so-called visions. You know, and he came up with this whole faith. Now, I, I got to tell you, it, it's disturbing sometimes to me because people put so much trust on a man who comes up with an idea. I mean, I could come up with a vision. I could come up with an idea, certainly for myself, and say that, you know, the the, the vision I had is a God who's called he, she. He's, he is a male, female God, is this God has breasts, but then he also has the male side of it on the other part in his front. And so they were the God who created all of us and they were called Hesheites, right? So all of us became Hesheites. And so we should, we should, praise and worship this this God that I, 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 I had a vision about, right? I mean, this is kind of weird. We have to have a yardstick for truth. This is where people go way off. They have these tangents and then people get sucked in and they, they believe these things because it's, again, the humanistic sort of view. Now, you've got to realize that um, one of the things that she also says on here is that um, Sister Susan Young Gates, daughter of Brigham Young and editor of the church Young Women's Journal and Relief Society magazine, wrote that our Heavenly Mother's watchful care and careful training helped shape our souls and prepared us for mortal life and eternal life to come. In fact, this is what she says. She stated our heaven, our great heavenly mother was the great molder of the prophet Abraham's nature. Greater than his genetics, his prenatal impressions, his cultural or natural environment, or even his earthly mother's nurturing, the BYU study article, a mother there clarifies. Okay, she's claiming now that she knows that Abraham, right, nature came from Heavenly Mother. That's what, that's what she's saying. She also says that there is an exalted woman, the mother of your spirit, who cares, instructs, and watches over you, who is helping govern the universe. There is someone on your side urging you to become all you can be, who sent her son along with the father to help show you the way, says Martin Polito, who is the co-author of BYU uh, Studies essay, A Mother. There. One of the main reasons Polito thinks Mormons do not speak often about Heavenly Mother and doctrines found in the King Follett discourse and sermon is because we are still learning about those truths and how to communicate them with people outside our religion. We need to remember how young our religion is, he says. We are still getting comfortable with and coming to grips with our theology. We are still creating vocabulary and very self-conscious about beliefs that conflict with mainstream Christian beliefs. Yeah, that's why I'm here to discuss that. We are trying to find ways to talk about them intelligently and persuasively. Early Christianity took centuries to codify its texts and symbols in art and theology. Yeah, well, you know, um, we're talking about the ancient church that came from the apostles, the apostolic church, and we are claiming that it was passed down from the apostles to the apostolic fathers, to the apologists, to the bishops, and continue to go forth. But, you know, it's just not imaginary because we have actually what? Historical proof to validate everything, not somebody who's coming up with this kind of different vision and, and different ideas just to try to persuade people. That makes sense. We don't we don't go that way because we don't go on this sort of uh, la la imagination kind of viewpoint. We go on what historical beliefs. What's been passed down from the beginning to today. We have what? We have apostolic succession from Peter all the way down through the patriarchs. There's never been a failure of a date with the patriarchs going to today's date. I and mean, we can prove all that. There has never been an apostasy. And so we can 
can prove it. We can validate it. You know, test it. Test it. If you think I'm wrong, test it. That's what I have to say to everybody. If you think that the ancient church is the wrong faith, then that's your choice. But you, you just don't go by feelings and assumptions. Go by validation, right? Validate. Validate. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. Talking about validation, I just got somebody who sent me something just the other day. I want to share this with you. And he says he's never going to pay back. He's never going to pay tithing again until the, the LDS Church, Mormon Church, opens its books. I believe it's a good idea. Open your books. Let people see. Churches all over the world who are Orthodox, who are non-denominational, who are Protestant, many of them open their books and people can see exactly how much money they get. So that's important. Why are Mormons' books closed? Financial books closed. You got to wake up to that reality. Now, here's some other information he says here. He says, Mormons might also shy away from topics like Heavenly Mother because it highlights where our doctrines differ, diverge from the rest of Christianity. Again, it's true. While it is good to build common ground, Polito says we need to be comfortable with our peculiar doctrines like our belief in Heavenly Mother. We'll get a better we'll get better at explaining and articulating ourselves, even if it takes a while for us to master our mother tongue, pun intended. OK, um, but we can get there. We should also remember that as a global church, we proselyte far more than the mainstream Christians and that our faiths will be far more amenable to the notion of a heavenly mother. Well, yeah, I mean, if you have a sales team out there, let's face it, they have like 50, 55,000 people pounding, pounding, knocking on doors, calling, calling. They're trying to persuade people. Doesn't mean, though, just because you have this group of people who are trying to persuade people who are Christians, right? Christians who, who believe in the right Godhead. Does it mean that you are going to what? You're going to influence a lot of Christians. There are going to be Christians who don't know that much that could, that could be caught up with this idea. Oh yeah, it's, it's true. I feel it. I feel it. That makes a lot of sense because they're looking at themselves and their mother and dad and they go, well, that's just logical then. Right. But in reality, for for Christians who know the word of God, it's not logical. This is not logical. We don't believe that. So <laughs> it keeps going on. It says uh, one of the truths is that Heavenly Mother played a vital part in our creation and the plan of salvation. Elder mm -hmm. Melvin Ballard taught no matter to what heights God has attained or may attain he does not stand alone for side by side with him in all her glory a glory like unto his stands a companion the mother of his children for as we have a father in heaven so also we have a mother there glorified exalted ennobled mother that is a startling doctrine i recognize to some folk and yet we ought to be governed by reason in, in giving consideration to this doctrine which is revelation from god okay okay Fourth, truth. We know more about our Heavenly Mother's nature than many might realize. Since our Heavenly Mother stands as an equal partner side by side with our Heavenly Father, much of what we know about our Father can illuminate our understanding of our Mother. As the Encyclopedia of Mormonism states, a Heavenly Mother shares parenthood with the Heavenly Father. This concept leads Latter-day Saints to believe that she is like Him in glory, perfection, compassion, wisdom, and holiness. Her unending love, her glory, her majesty, the sacrifice of her son, her patient and constant arms reaching out for us, comforting us. Many of these eternal truths are equally applicable to our Heavenly Mother and Father. Would you, would you also claim that that's what good parents do? also do in this earthly realm that we are parents and we have this sort of same kind of understanding again don't you think they, that mormonism takes this idea that it 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 sort of brings this this perfect heavenly earthly parents to this heavenly parent realm don't you see that I, I see it a lot it says that our heavenly mother is a creator of universes a framer of god without end a god over limitless 
creations and our eternal mother working in perfect partnership with our heavenly father and our heavenly mother continues to influence and shape our life. Wow. So we're getting some understanding in their beliefs now, trying to equate, see more of it, this, this, this further understanding of who my Heavenly Mother is. Very, very, very fascinating. Uh, when you have heard these words and when you understand them, you have to ask yourself, this is way out there with the beliefs of the Christian faith. Nowhere in the Bible does it declare any of this. Um, we, know, we don't see this in the ancient church at all, the historical original church. We don't see any of this information. But in Mormonism, boy, they are now giving so much truth to the world. You've got to ask yourself, why is this happening? Why? Now, it says, Heavenly Mother changes our ideas of the nature of God and what Godhood means. Men and women cannot be exalted, listen to this, without each other, just as we as we have a Father in Heaven, we have a Mother in Heaven. The Church's Mother in Heaven article emphatically states, for either to be fully God, fully God, each must have a partner with whom to share the power of endless lives. Now, how does this idea of heavenly parents, two divine beings working together to bring about our happiness and exalt change, exaltation, change the way we envision deity? It says the revelation of heavenly mother wasn't adding an extra God to some Mormon pantheon, uh, Polito says. Says the revelation of Heavenly Mother was de redefining the very nature, now listen to this, of what it means to be God. Okay, here you go. You have this, this understanding again, the revelation of Heavenly Mother was redefining the very nature of what it means to be God. So you have to have the male and you have to have the female in order for God to be God. Wow. Very different. Very different from Christianity. In honoring our Heavenly Mother, we slight the Heavenly, the heavenly Father or takes away from His glory and power. Lastly, it says, as a husband and wife, equal partners working in unison to bring about our exaltation, any praise or glory we give to our Heavenly Father or Mother naturally praises and glorifies the other. In fact, just as the knowledge that we can become gods and goddesses adds to the glory and majesty of God, helping us understand Mother and Father as the parents of future deity, the gods of gods. The knowledge of Mother in Heaven brings added power and glory to our understanding of Father in Heaven and vice versa. Understanding our Heavenly Parents as glorified beings who overcame all mortality could offer who grew in intelligence and glory to the point of creating universes and spirit children only adds to their power and complexity. So what you're finding in this whole essence of this view of Mormons understanding now more and more about Heavenly Mother is that you are coming to a realization that Mormonism is driving this understanding more and more that people are going to be who are Mormons are going to be more and more connected or 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 there is a chance there could be a schism in Mormonism. I think what's happening right now in Mormonism is that you're getting these ideas and these thoughts, these liberal views that are coming in, into to the arena. And I sure, I'm sure this could be happening right now. There are probably people who are Mormon who are saying this is going way too far. This is this is driving different points that I'm not comfortable with. And it could be too liberal of views and it could be driving a wedge within a number of Mormons who are not feeling good about this and they're seeing there's there's a, a issue going on I, I wouldn't be surprised if there is going to be a future schism 
in this church. I, I wouldn't be surprised. That's something that I could see in the future happening. I really do. I think it could happen. Anyway, huge, huge articles this past week. I had to divulge this. I had to give you this understanding because in essence, you have to look at the reality of what's taken place in the Mormon faith. I think they're running scared and I think they are going to be seriously um, realizing that in the future, if they don't make changes, they're going to lose more and more and more and more people. I see people all the time, every day, even in St. George, I see people almost daily telling me um, that they left the Mormon faith. It's bigger than you could ever imagine because the information going on the internet right now, people are finally being exposed more about their truths and they don't feel comfortable. And especially since people who are Christians, who know the word of God, who know basically what the belief of Christianity is when they look at Mormonism now, they go, no way, not interested. And I think that's happening more and more. And this is giving them a lot more struggle to go out and, and get people to, to believe their stuff. So anyway, hope you enjoyed today. A lot of information. Sorry it was long. I don't go this long, but it's well worth the information. God bless you guys. Have a great uh, day and, and talk to you soon.